today, which, by the way, guarantees they're bringing back their core of their roster. Mm -hmm. Dan Gilbert is committing to $43 million in luxury tax for next year. Now, I know that in the grand scheme of things, what does it matter how much the owner pays in tax? Because does that help the team on the court? But what I think it's showing is, is it's not like Dan Gilbert's not doing anything. He is mm -hmm. still very invested in this team. He is still sending a message to LeBron and other players that he is spending and that he wants to make this a championship team. They weren't able to make that Paul George trade. I've talked to all kinds of parties involved with it. Everybody's got a different story as to why they couldn't pull off the mm -hmm. three-way trade with the Nuggets that would have landed them, Paul George. Ultimately, it didn't happen. Does that ultimately become a fatal uh, you know, misjudgment that they weren't able to do it? We'll have to see. But I don't think it should be fair to look at the Cavs and say they're not doing anything well, because they are. But you lived through this once before, Brian, right? You were, you were in Cleveland when LeBron was in his last years there, right, in 2009, 2010, before he left to go to the Miami Heat. And it was a very similar story that they couldn't pull off. They, they tried Anton Jameson. Remember they tried well, to they get – They traded for Shaq and Antoine Jameson, but that team did not have Kevin Love and, uh, and Kyrie Irving. This team does. And I agree that going forward, the Cavs are in a tough position. But I also think that to say that they're not doing anything is also not accurate either. Not, it's not doing anything is, is a little harsher, but it's still not in the direction that one would hope. And the idea is, again, you let go of someone who is very productive, and now you're taking trips to Washington, taking mm -hmm. pictures of the like, – the optics are terrible. And all of these kind of sloppiness or mm -hmm. loose ends, they add up. Maybe it's not any one particular thing. But at the end of the day, a year from now, LeBron's going to sit back and think of his future, and he's going to say, well, what direction has this organization taken in the last year? Is it up or is it down? Mm. Well, stick around because the Jump Free Agency Special is coming right back with a guy who makes texting into an Olympic sport. That's Adrian Wojnarowski. Look at him, look at him, text, text it away. Look how fast those fingers move. Join us on next with more on the Raptors bringing back Kyle Lowry and Serge Ibaka. The NBA Free Agency Special. The NBA Free Agency Special, presented by Kia. Welcome back to the Jump Free Agency Special, presented by Kia. And it's time for us to bring back ESPN NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski for the latest on free agency news. And we talked at the top of the show about the difference in spending between this year and last year. Man, football players were tweeting about it last year. Everything was four years, five years, big money, big money deals. This year it's two, three-year deals. What's going on? Well, you, you guys hit on it earlier, Ramona. You know, fewer teams with cap space. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, teams that have certainly been less aggressive. But, but part of it is um, a lot of players, what slowed up the market, and talking to agents, general managers, is that expectations for so many players were really high when they looked at what happened last summer. Uh, teams and agents knew that without the smoothing in of the cap spike, they put it all in that last year, in the mm -hmm. first year, that players like Luel Deng, Timofey Mozgov, Players like that would just artificially get an advantage because they happen to be free agents then. And what's slowing the market now, a, a lot of agents, front office people believe, is that players aren't accepting of where they are financially. And mm -hmm. even when agents are saying, you really need to take this deal, this is the best you're going to get, they're being told, please go out and keep looking. There has to be something yeah. more for me. And that's, that's slowed it down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, timing's everything, right? And you saw all those deals last year. That's why there was an idea of cap smoothing, the idea of, that, well, maybe, you know, if we spread it around, everybody else will get paid. But now you're at this reality where you're not going to get the deals that you got last year. And I think that's how the market shakes out. Well, earlier today, you reported Toronto has re-signed Serge Ibaka and Kyle Lowry. So, they, but they were on shorter deals than I think people might have been expecting. What's Toronto doing here? Are they keeping those two guys, but then moving some other guys around? Well, it's... You know, both Serge Ibaka, Kyle Lowry had hoped to come into this period and get five-year, at least four-year deals. Now, they got the numbers they wanted. Kyle Lowry wanted to be a $30 mm -hmm. million dollar year player, and he got mm -hmm. that with a three-year deal that, that pays him upwards of $100 million. Uh, but, what, but what Masai Ujiri's trying to do here is if this group maxes out, and that's what he was concerned about, bringing this team mm -hmm. back, um, that if this group had gone as far as it could go, that he's got an exit strategy sooner than all of a sudden having two players in their 30s um, going into fourth and fifth years of deals. Mm -hmm. And so they could be two years into this, say we've gone as far as we can go, and then they can make moves and get out. But they also want to do get some money off now. And Toronto's looking at something else, too. They're seeing the talent drain in the East. Paul George mm -hmm. has gone West. Uh, Paul Millsap could potentially go West uh, you know, who knows what happens with Gordon Hayward uh, if he stays in Utah, that they also see a short-term window here 
uh, where, where they're going to have an opportunity to compete uh, because, uh, you know, we've seen this migration over the years and it's continued this year. Yep. So, Woj, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, th that Paul Millsap just a second ago. He's, he seems to me to be one of the guys who the market is, is squeezing. Also, maybe George Hill. Who are some guys that you think may be available for bargains that we didn't think were going to be bargains maybe 48 hours ago? Well, you know, players like Derrick Rose, uh, you know, you know, players who thought maybe they would do better than the mid-level, like a Patrick Patterson, who's been a really productive player uh, in Toronto. And I think that's where a lot of teams have held back and, and didn't jump in quickly this year. We, we saw more teams jump in quickly, do big deals. I think teams feel like guys are going to come back to them. And all of a sudden, with their teams who have exceptions, with the you know, taxpayer mid-level, uh, for example, the Golden State Warriors, and we reported this uh, today, Nick Young is very much on their radar. Mm -hmm. And uh, could they get him at that $5.2 million or a part of that $5.2 million exception when he's going to have opportunities maybe closer to the, to the mid-level, to the uh, full mid-level of eight, eight and a half million. So uh, yep. I think you're also seeing teams wait back and say, we're going to get some bargains here when guys come to the reality that, um, that the big deal they anticipated is not out there. And, and uh, so, so there's a lot of teams are sitting back. Mm. Good stuff, Woj. Thanks for, thanks for coming on again. We'll Thanks, see you guys. again later in the show. Hey, Brian, let's talk about Serge Ibaka, who, as Woj reported, re-signed with the Raptors for three years at $65 million. After getting traded to the Raptors at the All-Star break, Ibaka averaged 14.2 points and 6.8 rebounds in 23 games. This is an Uber, though. Well, let's talk Serge Bryson. Get it? You like that? You see what we did there? You hate when you see that, don't you? Is it a mistake for the Raptors to give him this much money? So the worry thing here, Serge put out a, a tweet I like that. with a statement yesterday talking about how frustrated he is that people have questioned his age. According to his mm -hmm. birth date, he's 27 years old, and he's absolutely correct that for years now, people have questioned and whispered behind the scenes, how old is he really? Um, but I don't think that's why people were hesitant to pay him. I think the reason he didn't have much of a market outside Toronto was that over the last two years, his numbers have taken a dip. And whether you're 27 or you're 31 or whatever anyone's age is, you feel a little bit weird going, you know, being into your biggest free yep. agent situation coming off two subpar years. And, you know, certainly his agent and Serge could explain this and say, well, things changed for me in Orlando when I was there. Things changed. I was a role player all mm -hmm. of a sudden in, uh, in Oklahoma City. Uh, things changed uh, dramatically for me when they changed the roster a little bit, brought in uh, uh, Inez Cantor. But that's what people are worried about is that production. And so I know that Toronto sat around and wondered if they should make this investment. They obviously had to talk a lot about it. He gets his money, and I'm happy for him, but we'll see whether or not these last two years were an anomaly. Well, and Woj talked, talked about this earlier. Toronto may be at their ceiling, right? I think, I think they had a decision to make of, okay, we, they, they, took them, they took the Cavs to six games the two years ago. This last year got swept, and it wasn't even close. And this group, like, they're getting older and more expensive. It's the same conversation we have with the Clippers. They're getting older and more expensive, and you can't beat the team that you're trying to beat. Is it time to tear it down? I say no. I mean, you look at the Eastern Conference, it's gotten weaker across the board, right? Okay. You look at, we just, in the first segment, we talked about the Cleveland Cavaliers. There's uncertainty about their future, obviously all mm -hmm. tied to what LeBron decides to do. Have the Raptors hit their ceiling? Maybe. But their ceiling may be the ceiling of the East in a year, or if not, if not this year. Mm -hmm. And this is what we always talk about when you have a good team and a good thing going in continuity as the Raptors do. Sometimes it, all it takes is a, a wet spot on the floor and a well-timed kick to the groin. <laughs> and all of a sudden, and all of a, but I'm just saying, like, you don't know what yeah, happens. Yeah. If you are uh, able to be in the position to yeah. take advantage of someone else's misfortune because of, of bad luck one way or another, you have to, you owe it to yourself to keep that going. It's now, particularly what is important about them is they manage to keep it going without overextending themselves. This could have been really ugly. A five-year deal for Lowry. A five -year Maybe deal they for have Lowry. overextended themselves, dude, because they're, they're now looking at a $20 million tax bill. They've never paid the tax that level before. Well, There's already been some speculation that they may have to trade backup point guard uh, Corey Joseph just to get off of the money, which, look, if you keep your, your two guys, one of them whom has been a multi-time yeah. all-star, and you got to get rid of your backup, okay, no big deal. But it wouldn't surprise me if, if, if Toronto takes a money move here. Well, there's already uh, talk of Valanciunas, of a Demar Carroll. Carroll yeah. I mean, they have a lot, a lot of their, like, they have, they've got their core, but the guys right next to the core are, it's, it's, are in danger. They, they've, now, they've now got four guys making over, I think, $12 million a year, $13 mm -hmm. million a year. That's a couple of them making over 20, three, three making over 20.
also highlights the difficulty of getting talent to Toronto. Why does DeMar Carroll make so much money? Because they had to offer him that to get him there. Yep. Why does Corey Joseph make so much money? Because they had to offer him that mm -hmm. to get him there. Now you've just got to manage the situation. But again, you keep your core guys together. It's, it's in a weird, bizarre way. It's just like Golden State, right? You, got, you keep mm -hmm. their core four together, then you have to make tough decisions. Do I want to pay Andre Iguodala $48 million over the next three years, know what my tax bill is going to be like? Probably not, but guess mm -hmm. what? I have to keep the success going because the alternative, to take a step back and then say, well, maybe something might come from heaven to help us out. Not, not good mm -hmm. enough. Well, the Celtics welcomed Gordon Hayward and his wife. They, they, that was good. And they spelled her name right, too. It's spelled with a Y. Mm. And the, the, the Fenway Park Jumbotron. And part of the sales pitch was a video that also ran on the same screen. You like that? I mean, look at that. Look, they got her name spelled right and everything. I bet people mess that up. You like that? No, I don't understand why Boston's go to every year is to take them to Fenway Park. Well, last year with Tom Brady. Remember that? He came out to the Hamptons. Yeah, I might Kevin be Durant. asking him. I go, where's, he might be looking around the corner. Where's Tom Brady? Yeah. No, no but you can't do that. Like, if Durant uh, got Tom Brady, you can't give Gordon Hayward Tom Brady. They take everybody to Fenway Park. That's, 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 their, their, thing? that's their thing. I mean, they didn't do it with Durant, right. obviously, because he said, you got to come to me. But everyone else. <laughs> It's like the Fenway visit is like a highlight. Like, nobody cares about Red Sox, if you, these uh, ball players. And by the way, if you're trying to wow me and wine and dine me, one person took me to the beach. The other <laughs> person took me to Fenway Park. Come on. They t the Celtics took him and showed him their vault of draft picks. Yeah, they said, exactly. look, look at our beautiful vault of draft picks. <laughs> All the trophies these around there. They got some banners. They Come have on. a lot of trophies there. But none of them have been won since 2008 yeah. with any of these players. Yeah, exactly. There's only one relevant banner. No one cares about the, the, the banners that Bill Russell won if you're a modern player, right? No one. Mm -hmm. They barely care about the ones that Larry Bird raised. I will say this. If Gordon Hayward goes to the Celtics, it's a gigantic change in the Eastern Conference. It yep. upgrades them. It changes their, their outlook going forward. In a way, he is a perfect player for them because they need a big infusion of talent. They need somebody who can take the scoring burden over when Isaiah Thomas is being double teamed as he was. Mm -hmm. And I think the question is, and the question if I were Gordon would be asking is, in Utah, I'm the number one option. I'm the go-to guy they run plays for yeah. at the end of the game. In Miami, I guarantee you they were showing him ways where he could be the number one option. Watch Goran Dragic set you up right. to be a hero. What are they going to say in Boston? Well, Isaiah will take care of you. We'll make sure Isaiah keeps you involved in the offense. That's a big factor as, they, as, as you look at team construction. It's also the reason why they'd be so great if they got them because mm -hmm. they would add them to a really good core. Well, Brian, you mentioned Miami, okay? I know they might have shown him a video or talked about that, but Deion Waiters, he might have a bone to pick with you on that one. He, I think he's getting the shot at the end of the game. They can't afford Deion Waiters and Gordon Hayward. Ooh, if, have... and, 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 and the reports today that uh, Pat Riley and Eric Spolster actually flew here mm. to L.A. to meet with Deion Waiters uh, yesterday. Mm. And, they had to say to Dion, hey, we had to deal with Gordon Hayward first, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to deal with you second. And Both. how does that make Dion feel? By the way, that, Not happy. It's a replay of what happened last year. They told Dwayne Wade, yeah, until, yeah, we, yeah. until Kevin Durant officially marks us off the list, That's right. we can't offer you what you're looking for. And that was kind of one of the, the sticking points in that relationship. Mm -hmm. But again, in both scenarios, I don't think they're wrong. They're saying we have a chance for yep. a superior player. Sorry if that hurts your feelings, but that's what we're about here. And we're not saying you're out of the picture, but we are saying we're going to give ourselves the best shot. By the way, if they do uh, try to bring back Dion Waiters, they either have to use the cap space that we talked about, mm -hmm. or all they'll have is what? Mid-level exception. Not, oh, and what else? Something else. Big you get excited goal. saying that. Oh, the non-bird, non qualifying bird option. No, you got to sell it. Come yeah. on, sell that. Well, I guess gonna well it's not going to, Dion's not going to buy it. He's that. not taking that. Um, He's definitely not it's, taking it's that. It's funny that Dion was the, uh, was the odd man out in Oklahoma City last year. They, had to, they used the money on Russell Westbrook to extend him, mm -hmm. and he sort of had to take a bad contract in Miami. He could end up as the odd man out if Gordon Hayward chooses Miami, and somebody could get an incredible Can't discount. Can't wait for the Players' but, uh, Tribune after but, that. Yeah, and there's another thing to say here, and nobody wants to say definitely not in Miami, but I think other teams will say it. How do we know that this is the new Deion Waiters? Mm. How do we know he just didn't have a contract year? Mm. How do we know this is a new James Johnson in Miami? The same mm. thing, mm. and he's probably going to get a great contract. Yeah, well, it's not well, going to be as much as Waiters is looking that's for. That's true. I mean, he's a resident of Waiters Island, so. You not not Waiters Island. Heat Island. <laughs> Heat Island Waiters Co. <laughs> hey, and remember, remember last year when Kevin Durant announced his decision on July 4th? Gordon Hayward looks like he's going in that same direction. Show is not over. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back to about and talk about the Thunder's chances in the West with Paul George. And Russell Westbrook in 2017.